In this video, we are going to learn the models that aim to help organizations attain competitive advantage, namely the value chain model and the five forces model. To start, it's important to know what an organization is. The term organization is defined as a group of people and resources working together to accomplish a set of goals. They perform all kinds of day-to-day -day routine tasks, such as selling goods, offering banking services, policing neighborhoods, improving the environment, and offering safety and comfort to passengers. Organization has two basic types, namely business and nonprofit. Any organization that seeks profit by providing goods and services is called a business, while any organization formed to accomplish political, social, or charitable goals that do not include amassing profit is known as non-profit organization. Every organization has a goal or plan that's referred to as its mission. The written expression of an organization's mission is called a mission statement. For example, Starbucks' mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. Another example is UNICEF's mission, which is to advocate for the protection of children's rights, to help meet their basic needs, and to expand their opportunities to reach their full potential. An organization uses money, people, materials, machines and other equipment, data, information, and decisions. They serve as inputs to the organizational system. Then they go through a transformation mechanism. Finally, outputs are produced. The outputs from the transformation mechanism are usually goods or services which are of higher relative value than the inputs alone. Providing value to customers and other stakeholders is the primary goal of any organization. All activities that take place in an organization, including those that involve computers, should contribute to its mission. The series or chain of activities that an organization performs to transform inputs into outputs in such a way that the value of the input is increased is known as value chain. This concept was first described by Michael E. Porter, a Harvard Business School professor. In a 1985 Harvard Business Review article entitled, How Information Gives You Competitive Advantage, he used the idea to show how companies add value to their raw materials to produce products that are eventually sold to the public. Porter developed the steps to perform a value chain analysis and split business activities into two categories, primary and support activities. The primary activities include all the actions that go into the creation of an organization's offering, while the support activities help the primary activities in creating an advantage over competitors. Let's now talk about the five primary activities. First, inbound logistics. This is how the raw materials and resources are obtained from suppliers. In this activity, we determine and analyze the shipping cost from the supplier's location to the company's facility. Second, Operations. This is how the materials and resources are produced, resulting in a product or service. Therefore, this includes all the value-creating activities that transform inputs into what the company is offering. In this activity, we identify and analyze the cost of running the warehouse and equipment or machinery. Third, outbound logistics. This is how the final product or service is delivered or distributed to consumers. In this step, we take into account the shipping costs to consumers and order processing operations. Fourth, marketing and sales. This is how the product or service is presented and sold to customers. In this step, we find out the advertising, promotional, and selling costs. Fifth, services. This is the support an organizational provides for the customer. It includes all the activities that maintain and enhance a product's value such as customer support and warranty service. In this step, we look at the repair costs and product training costs. In order to help streamline the five primary steps, Porter says the value chain also requires a series of support activities. The four support activities are, first, firm infrastructure that entails all the management, financial, and legal systems a business has in place to make business decisions and effectively manage resources. Second, human resource management that encompasses all the processes and systems involved in managing employees and hiring new staff. Third, technology development that helps a business innovate. 
Technology can be used in various steps of the value chain to gain an advantage over competitors by increasing efficiency or decreasing production costs. Fourth, procurement that involves how the resources and materials for a product are sourced and suppliers are found. The goal is to find quality supplies that fit the business budget. Maximizing the activities in any one of the steps allows a company to have a competitive advantage over competitors in its industry. To aid a company with its value chain, information systems are often involved as part of the organization's activities themselves. The information systems play an integral role in the process, whether providing input, aiding product transformation, or producing output. Analyzing the value chain gives businesses a visual model of the activities, which may or may not involve information systems, allowing them to determine where they can reduce costs, increase sales, and take steps to create a competitive advantage. At this point, let's further discuss the term competitive advantage. It is defined as a significant and ideally long-term benefit to a company over its competition and can result in higher quality products, better customer service, and lower costs. Many companies consider their information system staff a key competitive asset against other companies in the marketplace, especially if they have employees with training in the development and use of mobile devices, internet applications, social networks, and collaborative tools. The organizations make sure that their information system departments are totally supportive of the broader goals and strategies of the organization. To guide the organization in attaining competitive advantage, a widely accepted model that identifies key factors was proposed by Michael Porter. It is known as the Competitive Forces Model or the Five Forces Model. The key factors are the following. First, rivalry among existing competitors. The power of a company is lessened when there is a large number of competitors and equivalent products and services they offer. Conversely, a company has greater power to charge higher prices and set the terms to increase when competitive rivalry is low. Second, threat of new entrants. A company's power is affected by the force of new entrants into its market. An established company's position is weakened if it takes less time and money for a competitor to enter a market and be an effective competitor. Third, bargaining power of customers. When customers threaten to switch to rival companies, they have strong bargaining power. Therefore, a company needs to increase its competitive advantage by developing innovations to retain their customers. Fourth, bargaining power of suppliers. A company's power is weakened when there are few suppliers to an industry. A company would depend on a supplier and a supplier can drive up input costs and push for other advantages in trade. A company should then improve its competitive advantage to maintain the bargaining position. Fifth, threat of substitute products and services. A company's power can be weakened when close substitutes to its goods or services are available. Customers will have an option to switch to other companies offering alternatives. On the other hand, a company's power is strong when there are no close substitutes. The more these forces combine in any instance, the more likely firms will seek competitive advantage and the more dramatic the results of such advantage will be. Today, organizations invest in information systems and other technologies that would set them apart from other competitors that could potentially build a barrier for entry of new competitors and that would help them to stay competitive and profitable. Examples of these are the following. A transportation company investing in radio frequency technology to tag and trace products as they move from one location to another. A retail store investing in a point-of-sale system to make customers' transactions easier and faster. The response of the traditional film companies when digital cameras became popular. They had to provide similar or better digital products and try to stay competitive and profitable.